Hi guys and welcome back to Pass the Move and for today's episode in the Premier League series we've got a tactical and team guide for Everton uh, the seventh team in the Premier League in terms of the order that we're doing it alphabetically uh, so you know we've already covered up these six teams here and if you, any of you any of these teams here are you, that you know one of the teams that you're looking out for then uh, just uh, you know uh, well, look out for the future episodes. We release one every single day other than Fridays uh, and we'll be covering obviously every single Premier League team. But for now, Everton and uh, like the title suggests, it's a tactics and team guide. So we're just covering, uh, trying to set you up for success by giving you the best, hopefully the best tactics advice possible uh, and how to set up this Everton team for future success uh, and how to get the best out of the squad, you know, who to sell, who you should keep and build your team around. Uh, and maybe areas that you might need to invest in. Um, so like I always mention in episodes, one of the first things I like to do is actually see my coaching staff, um, obviously actually evaluate them properly, but in terms of actually just seeing whose judgment of ability I can trust. Potential is kind of obviously important, judgment of potential is important, but uh, in a different sense, because right now I'm just trying to find out who are my best players, and obviously uh, that means right now, uh, ability not not potential i'm trying to find out who's got the best current ability so steve walsh is the perfect candidate for that he's a coach and a director of football so we'll be trusting his judgment today uh in terms of the squad themselves you've got a very strong squad uh with everton a uh, very interesting team to take on i think the board expect you to get europa league football if i'm not mistaken top half as well so that's not even that hard to get to be honest I feel like in real life the, the expectations are Europa League football and possibly even Champions League to be honest uh, but top half you should be able to do uh, you know as long as you're above 10th place they'll be happy um, and I think you can it's very doable with this squad in truth I think you should be aiming for Europa League football and if you perform well enough there's no reason why you can't squeeze into fourth place in, in uh, for Champions League football of course um, in terms of where the they predict you to finish not the board but uh, you know season preview uh, you actually are expected to end in uh, Europa League football so I would say you, you have a very strong chance of ending fifth sixth or seventh um, and uh, I feel like some of these are, are quite, you know, they're trying a bit too hard, I suppose. I f you know, I feel like, um, well, maybe it's just the beta, but when I played, a lot of some of these teams here are the top, you know, traditional top six. Um, they didn't perform necessarily too well. So I feel like if you have a really good season and maybe if you get some decent results against them here, no real uh, reason why you can't. Uh, actually squeeze into Champions League football. So Everton naturally are a very interesting team to take over. I feel like a lot of t um, FM players try to take over them and uh, squeeze them into better positions. Uh, as you can see in the le recent league history, uh, they've only gotten Champions League football, I think, about once. Um, so the aim is, of course, to, well, um, you're in the Europa League this season, so if maybe if you win it, you could squeeze into Champions League football. Uh, just like Manchester United did. The other option, obviously, is to just qualify for Champions League football and then you can build on that and maybe go on and challenge for the title itself. Uh, and, you know, you'd be you'd basically be a legend at uh, Everton. Uh, in terms of history, though, they do have plenty of history. Nine Premier League titles to their names. And the last one was back in 1987. So it's been a, about 40 years' time. Uh, and you can definitely turn that around. European Cup Winners Cup as well. You've got a couple of FA Cups here. 1995 was the last one. So it's been some time since Everton have seen some uh, silverware. So if you could possibly add a League Cup to your, your you know, to your board, your honours actually, really, a trophy cabinet because you haven't got a single one here, uh, then I think the board would be appreciative of that. Obviously, just bear in mind, winning the, uh, the FA Cup or uh, the League Cup or Carabao Cup, I suppose, um qualifies you for Europa League football so if you somehow end up having a poor season then maybe you want to put all your eggs in one basket in terms of one of these uh, cup competitions. I feel like Europa Cup uh, reached quarterfinals is very realistic but um, maybe you should definitely, well maybe not, uh, maybe you should uh, try and aim to win it as much as possible. It's going to be very tough of course but if you do it 
uh, Champions League football is on the cards and uh, the board will be very happy with that and obviously better finances and whatnot. Uh, so yeah, let's just go back to the squad. So you need 22 players to manage any top squad really, uh, any team if you ask me. You've got 29 here so there's 7 players who don't necessarily need to be here. I've uh, gone to the under 23s and had a look at anyone who's over the age of 23 and I've also had a look at some of the youngsters to see who's ready for Premier League football. Uh, so you need to do that. And uh, it's, you really do because Tom Davies is one of those players who's in the under 23s, but he's actually suited for Premier League football, according to Steve Walsh. Uh, so he's gotten promoted. And obviously, there's some players here who do not deserve to be in the squad. Everton are a strange team to manage in truth. You've got, uh, you know, tactics that or players that don't necessarily suit a tactic and you kind of have a decision to make when you're managing Everton here. Uh, if you have a general look at the squad, you might think a 4-2-3-1 would be a decent shout. But when we look through the players here, uh, we're going to be going with my suggestion, which is a 4-1-2-1-2. I feel like that suits best and... Um, I'm not. I don't. I don't feel like four two three one gets the best out of you or best players. Uh, but obviously Everton are sort of in a transitional phase. Some of the transfers they've made this season are a little bit strange, and that comes with Ronald Koeman investing in certain areas that are. Uh, questionable to say the least to be honest but we'll discuss that further first of all we need to go through each player's um position and uh obviously see who's ready for the vision and who's not so considering you're expected to finish in top half uh, the players that you should you know the type of ability you should be aiming for is a good player uh, for the division obviously leading would be better and star even better and world class would be obviously the best but for now, just aim for good and uh, hope to try and build on that. I think with Everton, you've got a very strong squad, um, but let's see who makes it. So just having a look at the best 11 players at the squad here in terms of ability, this is the lookup. So if you have a, you know, if you have a look here, you've re only really got one winger in Yannick Bolasi. So that's kind of why I've gone with the 4-1-2-1-2. I feel like you have, a, you know, several defensive midfielders as well, central midfielders, attacking midfielders. It kind of just felt like it made sense to me to try and squeeze them into a 4-1-2-1-2 um, and uh, hopefully get the best out of this team. But it's, it's really tough. I mean, try making an 11 out of this. It just, it, it, it's really strange. You're kind of in a halfway point uh, of their history, I suppose, where uh, they're leaning they're not really leaning to either formation so you kind of have a decision to make 4 to 3 one would be a decent shout as well if you ask me but uh, I'm gonna try and, and do something maybe a little bit unconventional and go with the 4 one 2 one 2 I'm kind of sick of uh, suggesting every team play with a 4 2 3 one uh, so yeah, keeping that in mind, now we can finally sort out the numbers. So we mentioned having a squad of 22, and the reason is you want a best 11 of leading or star or world-class players, and then you want a backup 11 of youngsters who have potential to uh, become leading star or world-class players. And that way you have a nice balance. The youngsters are always trying to uh, take over the first team spot and get more minutes, and the, the first teamers are always um, you know, on their toes because they're aware that there's some hungry youngsters behind them trying to steal their spots. So bearing in mind our formation, we need only two players per position. We've got three goalkeepers here, so we'll have a look at who needs to get going. Martin uh, Stecklenberg is a leading championship player, so he'll probably be someone to move on. Pickford was just invested in and he's definitely a first choice goalkeeper. Um, so let's do that. Joel Robo, jo let's just call him Joel. He's a decent player for division, so he's probably going to be your backup. Uh, but you might be better off um, when you sell off uh, Martin here. He's worth 4.4 million. Um, you'll have Joel as well for 7.75 million. I think he's been here for a while, so you could probably move him on. And bring in another youngster. Pickford is, he, this is where you kind of have a decision to make because Pickford is already a youngster. So do you want two youngsters competing for the same spot? Uh, I feel like that would be better off, to be honest, but still have Jordan as your first teamer. Just bring in the backup youngster who will compete with Jordan and maybe, you know, I feel, I feel like I've done this before and goalkeepers are very happy to share game time. I've played um, a goalkeeper who's supposed to be a key player and I played him all the Premier League games and then I gave cup games, even Champions League football, uh, all to my backup goalkeeper. He's, he's really um, a great player, great youngster and uh, ready for division and everything. And uh, neither player uh, complains. I feel like if you break it up that way, it's very doable. But if you play jo Joel in the cup competitions, you might have some success, but he's only a decent player. So he's technically not good enough for the squad, like we mentioned. So you might be better off selling him. But yeah, we can look at other areas that need investment first before we decide that. 
So right backs, you've got three, but Mason Holgate, of course, can be a ball playing defender. And I feel like that's better off using him there, especially given the tactics we're using. Um, he won't necessarily be the best, uh, you know, right back. So we'll consider him a centre back. That leaves us with two right backs, Kuko and uh, uh, Seamus Coleman. And uh, I'm not really sure who this player is, and I'm actually confused that you guys, uh, Everton, have actually signed him. He's for free, so that's, I guess, good and, you know, uh, relatively safe buy. But at the same time, he's just a championship player, so not even Premier Division. It's just such a strange decision to bring him in. So I would say you might be better off just putting him in the under-23s. You're not going to be able to get rid of him right away, obviously, because you just signed him. If you could loan him out, that'd be perfect, and then sell him off later on. But um, you do need someone to uh, as a backup to uh, Coleman here. He's a good player for the division. Um, I feel like normally what I say is, you know, you want to bring in a leading player. Uh, but fullbacks are kind of tough to buy. They're in short supply in truth. And, uh, you know, I feel like uh, you, you'll be, it'll be tough to find the right back who's leading and to bring him in. If you could do that, then do that. But otherwise, just invest in a youngster with potential in the right back spot. And he can compete with Coleman and eventually overtake the Welshman. Centre backs, we've got Holgate there, so let's not forget him. A uh, bit of a strange decision in FM18, but Ashley Williams is only a championship player, according to Steve Walsh, who has incredible judgment of ability. So I think I would trust him. Um, I think you could move him on. He's been at Everton for a season, so maybe you should consider that. He's not even a decent player for the division, and if he was, it would still be a wise move to move him on. It's 5.5 million, and he's kind of high on the wage scale, 70k. Uh, but in terms of your first teamers, actually, let me put Seamus Coleman on the right back spot. I forgot to do that. In terms of your first team is Michael Keane's definitely the man to go. He's a leading player for most Premier League sides and possibly could improve by a bit more. So he's your first centre back without a doubt. That goes, um, you know, without question, like I said. Uh, Funes Mori is a decent player. And that leaves us with Phil uh, Jackie Elka, who's also a decent player. So this is another decision where you have to make. Uh, I would say F Mori is apparently a better player, according to Steve Walsh, but he's out for 10 to 11 months. So. Uh, Jackie Elka is going to be your other first teamer, but if you ask me, he shouldn't be. So, uh, it, really, these three centre backs should be moving on. Try and sell all of them uh, and bring in three other centre backs. You want one first teamer, another leading player, or a good player for the division at least, if you can't find any leading ones as your options. And then bring in two youngsters with potential, um, or actually just one, to be honest. I've completely forgot about Mason Holgate because he's still there. Uh, he's actually just suited for championship football. All right. So you might be better off just sending out Holgate on loan if you ask me. Uh, bring in the three centre-backs like I mentioned. Um, but maybe one of the youngsters, one of the backup players. Uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be a youngster. But bring in a backup player who's ready for the first team. Uh, for the first division to be honest. Uh, to be honest because uh, Holgate isn't. He's just a championship player. Uh, if you sell Jackie Elka there, 975k. Ashley Williams for 5.5. And uh, Funes Moria for 14.5. You'd be, you'd be quite well off. But... Bear in mind that Mori is, of course, injured for 10 to 11 months. That's basically the whole season. Uh, so you won't be able to sell him just yet. So you might want to bring in uh, a player on loan to fill that centre-back spot while he's out. Um, uh, obviously, I'm going to say this, like I always say in all my episodes, do not sell if you're not confident in bringing in another player. Um, you know, a lot of people sell and then they, they can't sign anyone else. So then they end up short on numbers. You're better off signing someone first and then selling the player that you don't need. I feel like that transfer uh, method works better. Uh, and so if the transfer ever, ever falls through, you have safety in numbers. So there you go. you got five centre-backs. You only need four. And we already talked about Funes Mori being out. So that kind of leaves you with four. But at the same time, Holgate's not uh, ready for the division. Jack Yelka and Ashley, Willi uh, Ashley Williams actually isn't ready for the division either. And uh, Phil Jack Yelka is just a decent player. So that kind of leaves a lot of pressure on Keane to deliver. <clears throat> so... Uh, in terms of the left back spots, they are there are Leighton Baines and Luke Garbert. Uh, Baines is of course a good player for the division, but Luke Garbert unfortunately isn't good enough for the league, and apparently he won't even be or won't ever be. Uh, prediction is that he's a leading championship player. My bet is try and send him out on loan and hope that he becomes better. But even if he becomes a decent player for the league, he's not good enough for your team, so you might be better off selling him uh, and making some money off him. Let's have a look at his contract. Ends in 2020, so you have some time. You might be able to give him 
a season's loan and then see if he improves and then sell him off for some more money possibly. Uh, but yeah, you definitely need the backup to Baines with a youngster with potential because uh, right now you kind of just have one left back really. Uh, midfielders, so you've got plenty of them. You've got Sh uh, Schne Schneiderlin, McCarthy, Idrissa Guy, uh, Mohamed Besic, uh, Sigurdsson, Tom Davies. Uh, you've got attacking midfielders in Rooney, Baxter, Barclay, uh, Barclay, I was going to say Barclays, uh, Klassen, David Klassen. Uh, so you've got way too many if you ask me. You've got 10 and you only need 8. Two defensive midfielders, four central midfielders and two attackers is what we're trying to go for. So we're going to push up Rooney into the striker position. That leaves us with three strikers with Omar, Sandro and Rooney. Um, and that leaves us with nine now. Uh, and if we just kind of... Uh, We've got Klassen and Barkley. Uh, so what we want to try and do is actually squeeze in the best players together. So Guy is head and shoulders apparently above everyone else. So if you consider him a defensive midfielder, we'll just squeeze him in there. Uh, Gilfi Sigurdsson, that doesn't necessarily stand out. Barkley does though, so let's play him uh, as an attacking midfielder, for example. Uh, Klassen, good player and close to potential. Sigurdsson's a good player as well. Besic is not even in with a shout, to be honest. Uh, McCarthy, good player as well, apparently. And Schneiderlin. So this is where you kind of have a decision to make, and it, you have to kind of base it on who you see to be a first team and who might improve. I feel like Klassen's going to be expecting first team football because he's just been signed. Nope, he's only a rotational player, apparently. Uh, Davies is a hot prospect, so that's not nothing. That's not something we really need to consider. Sigurdsson's expecting first team football, so let's maybe play him as a central midfielder. That leaves us with Schneiderlin, who's a first team on 128. Oh my God, how you how, how do you have him on there for 120k? Uh, James McCarthy is out for six to weeks to three months, so don't worry too much about him. He should be back before uh, Premier League football returns, and if not. Um, you know, he'll, he'll be back soon enough anyways. I feel like uh, Schneiderlin, with the money that he's on, you should probably play him as well. So in that sense, um, you know, you've you've at least got your first teamers there. Uh, you've got another two defensive midfielders. I feel like Besic is just a decent player for the, uh, for the division and he has injury uh, issues, susceptibility, so you might be better off moving him on. That leaves you with eight finally, but the problem is uh, that Jose Baxter or Jose Baxter is just a Skybet League One player, so you need to move him on as well, and that leaves you with seven players. Um, so this is why you can see that we've got you know a midfield issue. A lot of the strength in the squad is in midfield, and uh, you know you, you you're try, kind of trying to squeeze them all in together so you get the best out of your team. Um, but if we consider, for example, McCarthy and Schneiderlin or McCarthy and Guy are the midfielders, the defensive midfielders. Uh, you've got. Uh, Sigurdsson and Davies as midfielders as well and you've got maybe one of Schneider or McCarthy depending on whichever one you see there so that's three central midfielders you've got two attacking midfielders here Klassen apparently is happy to play as a um as a rotational option he's a very good shadow striker so I think we'll keep him as an attacking midfielder considering the position we are so the area that you need to invest in is actually bringing in a youngster in centre midfield I don't think it, you know given how many players can play in defensive midfield I don't think that's an area you need to invest in um, so maybe just invest in a youngster a central midfielder youngster who can come in and do a job for your team uh, and who has plenty of potential so bearing that in mind uh, that's kind of what we've gone for uh, and that leaves us with a couple of issues you've got Aaron Lennon, Morales, Vlasic, uh, Dominic Calvert-Lewin uh, you've also got Yannick Bolasi uh, all four, five of these players don't actually have a position in your squad. Now, just to keep in mind, Aaron Lenz is just a championship player, so he shouldn't even be someone you're considering, so let's consider that player sold. Uh, Vlasic is a championship player, and Dominic is just a championship player as well, so these two shouldn't be considered. So your real op your real issues are with Morales and Bolasi. Now, Bolasi is out until winter. Six to seven months, really, is kind of just about January, tr uh, January transfer window time. And Morales is just considered a decent player for the division. So again, not someone that you have to heavily consider. Uh, I don't feel like he has any necessary 
position. Uh, maybe you could retrain him, I suppose, as an attacking midfielder, but that position's well taken. A striker we could do with, but I feel like because he's a decent player, you'd be better off moving him on and bringing in an actual striker. He's worth 20 million for a decent player, so uh, he wouldn't necessarily be a huge loss. At the age of 29, you're not going to get a better chance to sell him, uh, and he, his contract runs out in two seasons' time. Yannick Balassi is the real loss, to be honest. A good player for most Premier League sides, but the problem is we're not playing with any wingers. I don't think you could necessarily retrain him into a striker with any good sense. But he is worth 26.5k. He's on high wages at 75k as well. Uh, and you might be better off just selling him off once his, he, you know, his injury is over with. Uh, unless you try to play with a 4-2-3-1. But bear in mind, obviously, all the strength you have in midfield. Um... That's kind of where you have a decision to make. You can definitely, you know, if you eventually do sell Bulassi for a lot of money and Morales as well, you could invest that and bring in a top striker. Uh, that's kind of where you need some strength in. You've got a youngster and Sandro who's uh, suited to the Premier League football and apparently he's the best striker at the club at the moment. Uh, but he's got a ton of potential as well, the former Barcelona man. Uh, but the problem is, of course, Omar Nias is just a championship player. So if we consider our strikers now, it's, uh, Sandro, Nias and Rooney. Not the best pairing. Uh, you need four strikers, you've only got three. And uh, technically, you've only got two if we consider Nias isn't even an option. Rooney is a decent player for the division, so that's not, he should technically also not be an option. But you've just signed him, you're not going to be able to move him on already. Uh, maybe in the transfer window, you could try that. Um... And that kind of means that you need, if we consider Rooney and Nias aren't your strong suits um, or your best option, we, ha we, we can consider Rooney for now because, you know, we're short in strikers, but you definitely need to bring in two. So try and bring in two ready-made players, if you ask me. I feel like Sandro is the best striker at the club at the moment, um, but not only is he... Okay, apparently he is expecting first-team football. I thought he wouldn't be. Uh, he's got great attributes in truth, but, um, you know, maybe pair him with a ready-made striker and uh, Rooney might be happy playing backup. No, he's a first team on 160k. Good God, Everton, what have you done with your transfer policy? <laughs> um, all right then, let's assume Rooney and Sandra have to play together so everyone's happy. You'll eventually move on Rooney, so bring in two youngsters with potential maybe. Um, but if you ask me, Rooney's not good enough for first team, I think just make him unhappy, uh, put him on a rotational status and uh, move him on in the earliest opportunity because he's on some high wages and he's not good enough for your team. Um, and bring in a top striker to partner Sandro and uh, if we assume Rooney's out of the picture that leaves three striker spots open so one top player for Sandro to be playing with and a backup, um, two backup youngsters with potential so this is why I kind of mentioned that you have a bit of an issue you, you know you, if you play with a 4-2-3-1 that kind of solves your striker issue because you've got Sandro and Rooney you only need two strikers with the 4-2-3-1 formation but at the same time that means your central midfielders you have way too many of them and um, you know, you're not, you, I don't think you'll be able to squeeze as many players together. You know, if it's 4-2-3-1, if that means you're only playing three of these players. Can you imagine leaving any one of these? Barkley, uh, Sigurdsson, uh, Guy, and uh, Schneiderlin. Can you imagine leaving any one of them out? And if you do, you've, you've left out also McCarthy, uh, Tom Davies. I guess Tom Davies leaving him out isn't a huge deal, but, you know, Klassen, for example, as well. So it's just, it's a tough decision to make whether you want to go with a 4-2-3-1 or 4-1-2-1-2. But I've decided the 4-1-2-1-2 is best. And the striker department needed invested in, in investment in anyways, so might as well uh, go all out with the 4-1-2-1-2. Uh, so bearing that in mind, this is a tactic that we're going with. It's sort of a pass and move type of football. Uh, we didn't include our strikers. So let's do Sandro and Rooney. And there you go. That's your first team there. Apparently, you could definitely improve in some areas, like we mentioned. So a striker department would need some improvement alongside Sandro. Everywhere else looks relatively strong. Jackie Elka maybe could be moved on. But everyone else is a good player or more. Uh, so yeah, pass and moves type of football. We've gone with the control mentality, structured team shape, because I like the player roles to do the job themselves. Um, you know, I feel like when you play structured, that means everyone's doing their own little job. When you play fluid, the team defends and attacks together and uh, it has a bit more reliance on team instructions to tell them what to do. I'm not a fan of too many team instructions, so structured helps with that as well. We've only gone with three, shorter passing, offside trap and tighter marking. Uh, and that will hopefully bring out the best out of your squad there. Um, and uh, yeah, we can go through each role one by one. So Pickford's naturally a goalkeeper on defend. Keane is very comfortable playing as a ball playing defender. He has no issues with it. He's also comfortable as a central defender. Uh, given that Jackie Elka 
uh, well, apparently his best is a central defender on stopper, but we need him as a central defender on stop. We can't play him on a stopper duty because we are, uh, or, yeah, I think that is a duty, uh, or because we are playing an offside trap, so it doesn't make sense. So we'll just play them alongside each other like that, I think. Jackie Oko is comfortable on the right, Keane also wants to be on the right but maybe his best playing is a ball playing defender on the same side as the central midfielder here. Uh, Coleman as a complete wing back on attack it just kind of makes sense uh, which you know playing this formation you kind of need players who can roam, uh, play risky football and uh, you know a good dribbling and obviously um, creative player so complete wing back on attack helps more uh, wing back on attack would be a really good option as well um, but I, th I feel like you should eventually try and move into a complete wing back on attack uh, that works a lot better they roam from the position as, as you can see they run they dribble with the ball um, they cross more often that's exactly what you want you want crosses from byline they get further forward all that sort of business so they they work better than the wing back on attack duty uh, so the same goes with Baines if you feel like they're not performing too well as complete wing backs on attack, then go with the wing back on attack. But give them a couple of uh, games, uh, or really a couple of months, to be honest, in this position, just to see how they perform, because uh, this is definitely the more suited role for your team. So deep line playmaker on defend is what we're going for. Uh, you could really play Guy or Schneiderlin in this position. Either one of them are good enough. Uh, they might not be entirely comfortable with it. So uh, you know Schneiderlin, for example, is a defensive midfielder. When you push him up, he's a carrier or a ball-winning midfielder. Uh, but I feel like he's better off being played in defensive midfield if you ask me and Guy can play in his very natural position as a ball winning midfielder on support duty he's much more suited to it uh, and he loves it he definitely can play as a deep line playmaker so bear that in mind if he's not performing well there or Schneiderlin's not performing well you can move him down I mean look at that that's very decent attributes for a deep line playmaker and he comes deep to get the ball um, so Sigurdsson as a roaming playmaker seems to make the most sense if you want to squeeze in Barkley and Sigurdsson together. He's very capable as a shadow striker as well, so if you feel like he's not performing well as a roaming playmaker, maybe switch him up there and play Barkley as a roaming playmaker instead. Uh, that might work a bit better for your team too. Um, obviously Barkley isn't the best in terms of a shadow striker, I suppose. No, he's got very good attributes, I'm not sure I thought that. His aggression could do, well, do some work. But yeah, like I mentioned, if you feel like a couple of games have gone by and neither of them are performing too well, then maybe switch their positions because they're very capable of play the, playing in either position. Complete forwards on support on um, both sides uh, to go with the complete wing backs on attack here. Uh, Sandra and Rooney very comfortable. I don't think either one of them has a side preference, but uh, Sandra's right-footed. Rooney, what are you? He's right-footed as well, so maybe... Uh, you know, during the game, if one of them is having a bad game, switch them around with each other uh, and put them on the position on the left where they'll cut into the right and shoot with the right foot it might suit them a little bit more. So that's kind of what we're going for, uh, pass and move football. So you need creative players, you need players with plenty of movement, freedom of movement, roaming from their positions. That's why we're going with a complete forward on support. They help, they help roam, they play risky passes, they dribble more, all that sort of business. A shadow striker also moves into the channels, which is very useful in this type of uh, formation because, you know, you don't have natural wingers. Um, a ball winning midfielder will help you win the ball, win the ball back and it'll help with the tighter marking bit where they have tackle harder. Uh, a roaming playmaker obviously just is roaming and uh, he'll also drop back as well to help the deep line playmaker on defend who uh, he'll do very you know a lot of the defensive work and uh, he'll still be a creative player for you so that should help your um, pass and move type of football so that's kind of what we've gone for the two other slots you can have uh, you know like me I like to have a containment strategy and an overload strategy on both two spots or you can uh, make use of your squad's versatility and have a 4-2-3-1 here for example another formation here and uh, hope for the best really um, but this is kind of what we've gone for and I feel like it makes the most sense and brings out the best out of your squad but definitely if you ask me the main areas that need investment are your striker position and your centre back uh, position. Maybe if you're playing with a 4 2 3 1, you might need some improvement in the wings, but at least your first teamers are strong enough. Uh, so, bearing that in mind, I feel like we've covered just about everything. In terms of the under 23s uh, and under 18s, who are your best? Uh, you know, players to look out for maybe. You've got quite a number of them to be honest, from Henry down to about Nathan. Uh, these players should, um, you know, well, I suppose grow up to be good enough for your squad. The issue is, of course, Henry's an inside forward. Maybe you can retrain him to be a striker. That might work for your team a little bit more. Left back still would be very useful if only they were ready for the division already this season. You've got a nice little goalkeeper there. Uh, Lookman here is an inside forward. Maybe you could retrain him from now to become a striker or an attacking midfielder. Uh, Thomas Scully, though, will suit your side perfectly as a ball winning midfielder. The only issue is uh, you need to push him up into central midfield. I feel like his attributes are very poor, though. Uh, and 
Anthony Evans, advanced playmaker, maybe you could retrain him as a shadow striker. He's got some decent stats there for it. Uh, certainly better than advanced playmaker because he doesn't have that much vision. Uh, and that can lead us with Nathan Bro Broadhead. I was going to say Brohead. Um, but either way, he doesn't really have a spot for your team and his attributes are quite poor. You've got a bunch of youngsters who have a ton of potential, but apparently the attributes aren't too good. Shiny is another player to keep an eye out on for. Uh, he's three stars apparently, only a championship player though. Um, if he only was ready for Premier League football, we could have promoted him. As an advanced forward, it's not an, a, a role that we're looking for, but I think he's quite comfortable playing as a complete forward. Maybe he's not really got the strength side nailed down, you know, the heading, the strength, the jumping reach. So maybe you might be better off playing in attacking midfield as a shadow striker. That would work certainly much better for his attributes. Swiss Interna International, bear in mind. So uh, give him a season's loan. Hopefully he'll come back for you ready uh, for the first team. So that's another area that you might want to keep an eye on. Maybe instead of bringing in, uh, actually paying money for strikers, you might want to trust someone like... Uh, where did he go? I can't believe I forgot his name. Shani, for example. So uh, send him out on loan and bring in another uh, loanee instead who's ready for the first team and ready as a striker. So by the time next season is over, that player's loan will be over and he can promote Shani into the first team. Hopefully, if he becomes Premier League ready. But anyways, I think we've covered everything. Uh, in terms of money, you've got 20 million. But if you ask me, I like to have it in the middle, just leaning towards transfer budget. So you really just have 11 million. Uh, otherwise, if you you know if you leave it on 20 million, you've only got about 40k wages to, to give out to whoever you're bringing in. Um, but yeah, I feel like that's the end of the episode. We've given you as much advice as possible. Hopefully, that will bring the best out of your squad as well. Uh, and uh, if you did enjoy today's episode, then of course please do hit the like button and subscribe for more daily football matcher 2018 content. And as always, guys, thank you all very much for watching.